Long Island, New York, 1999. A British immigrant begins work at Teledata Communications. By the time of his arrest, three years later, in November 2002, he has helped a gang of Nigerian thieves steal millions of dollars worth of personal information. 13,000 fake credit reports. 30,000 victims. 50 to $100 million stolen. At the time, the largest identity theft case in U.S. history. This is the story of Philip Cummings. To begin the story, we start with Teledata Communications. Teledata made credit prompter boxes, which are easy to use credit check terminals found at more than 25,000 companies around the country. The terminals make it simple for a car dealership, cell phone shop, or apartment rental office to perform routine credit checks. The company was a direct line into the big three credit bureaus, Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion. You can think of Teledata as an information middleman. In 1999, Teledata hired Mr. Cummins, an English immigrant, to work in a support role. We'll call him Help Desk. In early 2000, Help Desk took a turn to the dark side when he met Linus Baptiste, who we'll call the Asker. Unable to find a photo of Baptiste, we'll be representing him using a photo of Joe Pesci's character from Goodfellas because why the hell not? And this is where things get interesting. Mr. Baptiste, aka the Asker, would provide the names and addresses of people to search for in the credit records at Teledata. Mr. Cummings, aka Help Desk, would then use confidential access codes that allowed them to mine the credit bureaus for their entire financial records, including bank accounts, credit cards, and loans. Together, the two crooks would then sell the information to other participants in the scheme, members of a Nigerian drug ring, for $60 per identity, and split the funds. Mr. Cummings left the job in March of 2000, but court documents say that before he did, he was sure to download a spreadsheet of usernames and passwords that he could use to access reports at all three credit bureaus. Of course, the crime doesn't end here. No, it's just beginning. Once in the hands of these more sophisticated criminals, this is what happened. The crime syndicate used their access to the credit bureaus to loot personal savings accounts, rack up fake charges on credit cards, change the addresses on bank accounts so that new credit, check, and ATM cards were mailed directly to the thieves. Open new lines of credit. One elderly woman with only $1,000 in her bank account discovered that criminals had systematically withdrawn $35,000 from it. Often, the thieves would use stolen credit cards to rack up spending sprees at places like Home Depot and Target before reselling the product for cash at 50% its normal price. Ultimately, the US government estimates that between 50 to $100 million was stolen using the tactics described above. This here, this is Kevin Barrows, AKA Case Crack, AKA you do not want to cross this guy. Looks nice, he isn't. It's 2002 and Barrows, an FBI agent in New York, has been passed a case deemed unsolvable. Challenging, yes, but he's starting to put the missing pieces together. Barrows knows that 15,000 people have been victimized across the country by somebody using corporate codes and passwords to access Experian, Equifax, and TransUnion. Barrows, aka Casecrack, teams up with a New York assistant attorney and begins investigating companies across the US who have had their codes stolen. The common factor? They all use the software made by Teledata. Casecrack begins focusing on help desk representatives at the company as the likely perps, knowing that they interact with customers who provided confidential personal information. This leads him to a house in New Rochelle, New York, two days before Halloween 2002. The house Barrows, aka Case Crack, is at belongs to John Baptiste, aka the Asker. Case Crack tracked it down after he found a telephone number linked to the home. Barrows searches the house, finds nothing. About to leave, he pauses. Something about the bed upstairs just doesn't seem right to him. The canopy over the bed seems out of place. It's too large. FBI agent Barrows returns to the bedroom and pushes at the canopy. When he does, he discovers something interesting. Pounds and pounds of documents containing the personal information of hundreds of individuals who have had their identity stolen. He has a smoking gun. All told, the Baptiste Cummings ring stole identities from at least 30,000 people from 2000 to 2002, and rang up tens of millions of dollars in profits. 
Cummings, the original perpetrator, goes on trial September 2004. More than 300 victims come forward, recounting their struggles with finance companies to erase unauthorized charges on their credit cards and to regain their credit ratings. Cummings, who faces a maximum sentence of 50 years, tells the judge he is very, very sorry, unquote, for his conduct. Cummings asks for leniency because of a heart condition and pleads guilty to conspiracy, wire fraud, and identity theft. He is given 14 years in prison. Linus Baptiste, aka the Asker, is charged with one count of wire fraud and is later sentenced. At the time, this was the largest case of identity theft in US history, but it wouldn't stay that way for long. No, there was another big case to come. Tune in, we'll have that covered for you very soon. Thank you for watching.